Good morning. Day two of our seven days through the book of Judges. Today we read of the exploits of uh, Deborah and Barak. And then, of course, the, the beginning of the story of, um, of Gideon. So I want to read to you uh, Judges chapter 6. This is from the, the story of Gideon, verses 11 and 12. Uh, now, this is when Gideon is threshing wheat in a wine press, which you don't do because there's no wind in a wine press and you need wind to thresh wheat. But he's terrified of the Midianites and so that's where he is. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree which was in Ophrah which belonged to Joash the Abiezrite while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him the Lord is with you you mighty man of valor. So Here again, we have this appearance of uh, this divine figure, the angel of the Lord um, to Gideon. And the words that struck me this morning is where it says the angel of the Lord came and sat under a terebinth tree uh, in Ophrah, I think it said. And there's this picture of like Jesus sitting under a tree, watching Gideon thresh his wheat in a wine press. And then he, he says to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. <laughs> I mean, I, I see a bit of a sense of humor in that, but it reminded me of something that happens at the end of the Gospel of John. And I want to read that to you. This is from verses 4 to 7 of chapter 21. But when the morning had come, sorry, let me stop now. So this is the a whole bunch of the, the apostles, the disciples have now gone fishing. When Jesus has already said to them, if you follow me, you'll be a fisher of men. And at that time when he said that, they left their nets, they left their boats, they left their business and they followed him. Now he's dead. And it's like, what do we do now? Well, they go back to what they used to do. They now started fishing again. Well, it's not what they were meant to be doing. They were meant to be fishing for men. So when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore And yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Now that reminds me of Gideon when this person says to him, sitting under a tree, Yeah, you mighty man of Ella. He says, what do you mean I'm not a mighty man of Ella? He doesn't know who it is. It hasn't dawned on him yet who he's speaking to. Same thing with the disciples here. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you got any food? And they answered him, no. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And so they cast. And now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for he'd removed it and he plunged into the sea. Okay, so what am I seeing here for us this morning? Uh, Four points. Uh, First one, God knows where you are, even when you are somewhere like a place in life, not necessarily a physical place, but the situation that you're in in life. He knows where you are, even where that place where you are is not where you are supposed to be. The, the, you know, Gideon is not supposed to be threshing wheat in a wine press. The disciples are not meant to be fishing, but Jesus knows exactly how to find you where you are. Number two, Jesus is still in complete control, despite the mess you may have made of your life or the bad decisions you may have taken. Because you may feel out of control, like it's irredeemable, like you've, you've, you've slipped so far gone you can't redeem the situation you're in so much financial trouble or whatever it is that it's it's you can't do anything about it anymore jesus where's he he's sitting on a tree sitting under a tree and he's looking at you do whatever you're doing and when he's ready he then speaks he says you're a mighty man of valor he says have you caught any fish because i'm the one who's going to help you catch what you're looking for he's in perfect control take comfort in that thirdly Jesus loves you and he knows where you should be and how to get you there. In fact, 
Jesus is the only one who knows where you should be, what you should be doing with your life and how to get you from where you are now to there. He's the only one who knows. Then fourth, when you do finally realize that it is the Lord who is speaking to you, because we don't always realize that it is the Lord speaking to us. As Gideon didn't realize, he just thought it was some guy sitting under a tree chirping him. And the disciples didn't realize. They just thought it was some guy on the beach shouting at them, Hey, have you got any fish for us? Have you got any fish for me? But when it dawns on you, as it finally did on Gideon and as it did on the, on the disciples, it's the Lord. Drop everything you are doing and follow him. That is the lesson here. When you finally realize God is telling you to do something or go somewhere or stop something or start something, when you have become convinced that it is God who is speaking to you from his word, from the counsel of others, from the sense in your heart, the spirit speaking to you, when you have become convinced it is God, drop everything and follow him immediately. You know, when the story of your life is finally told to your great grandchildren after you are dead and gone, the only stories that will endure the things that will be a true and lasting legacy in your life will be the things that God told you to do. None of the other things that you try to do or start or bear fruit in or make money with or whatever it is you gave yourself. All of those things will be blown away by the winds of time, like chaff being blown away in the wind. The only things that will endure will be the things that God told you to do. Those are the things that will bear fruit. And so when you hear his voice, stop immediately and follow him. Good advice. Good advice for all of us. So God bless you. And I will see you tomorrow.